Hey guys, what's up? Andrew here, obviously. And uh, this is going to be my first video on the channel. Uh, hopefully I make more, but being that my willpower and motivation is pretty shit, I don't know. Uh, as the title says, I'm just going to start off showing my record collection. I have about like 10 or so records here I'll just show off. Um, if you're here from the Instagram account, uh, thank you so much for the support. You guys are great. And I did not put that flag behind here because I was trying to be clever. That's what it's been for like two years or whatever. Just so happens that my Instagram account is the same name as that album. Anyways, most of these are going to be metal. Most of the, in, in the collection, that is. Most of the records in my collection are quote unquote basic. Um, there's a few underground picks here or there, but if you're in the metal, you, you, you all know all these records. I only have around like 65 or 66 records and they're all, a lot of them are just the classics, but there's a few underground ones there and a few non-metal. So uh, I guess I'll just get started. All right, so the first album we have here is actually not even a metal album. It's actually a hip hop album and a hip hop classic at that. Low End Theory by Tribe Called Quest. 1991, this is the second album from A Tribe Called Quest. They're a jazz rap group. Here's the cover, that cover. I always feel like with jazz rap, most artists kind of tend to lean more towards the jazz or the rap. This is a really nice organic blend of both of them. They're 50-50. Comes on two records, black with just a kind of basic center label. Uh, but yeah, this is a really, really awesome album. Excursions, Bugging Out, Rap Promoter, The Infamous Date Rape, Check the Rhyme, of course, that's the big single. Jazz, we've got What, and then Ending With Scenario. So if you're into rap, you've heard this album. It's not an underground album at, by any means. If you're looking to get into rap, I'd honestly recommend this especially if you're into jazz, because this is a really laid back, fun, accessible album. It's a great album to put on if you have like friends over, or you're like me and you're talking about records at 12.30 in the morning and you don't have any friends. Um, yeah, uh, check this out, this is a great album. Next album is a 70s hard rock album, and you're going to look at the cover and you're going to think it's a little suspect. And you're going to see the back of it and you're going to think, wow, this is, this is not going to be good. But trust me, even though it's kind of glammy, it's really good. Angel, hell of a band. Angel is a 70s hard rock glam band. They got discovered by Gene Simmons. Um... Got them signed to Casablanca Records, and they're just a great, great band. The debut was great, but this is easily their best album. Black Vinyl, Center Labels, classic Casablanca, Center Label. Yeah, this is just a really fun, almost like a party album. I played a few of these songs. When I had my fa like family friends over who were like older and like into like classic rock and stuff, and they really dug it. Here's the back. Uh, Feeling right starts off the album. That's great. Fortune is great any way you want it. It's so much better than the German song. It's not the same song, but it's so much better. Mirrors, Angel theme ends the album. It's just an awesome, awesome album. So if you're looking for something fun, something not just some, some fun 70s kind of hard rock music. Check this out. It's not what you think it is. It's not that bad. Okay, so we've got a third record here, and it's actually the first metal one. At the Gates, Lord of the Soul. 1995, Gothenburg, Sweden. Classic. A lot of people prefer the earlier stuff. Uh, this is my favorite material from At the Gates. Some gets a lot of flack for being a really big 
influence to like core, metal core, depth core, stuff like that. It's just uh, you know a greenish full dynamic range. I understand why people are they don't like it because of that. It does sound very ahead of the time, but this album is just so good. Black vinyl, basic center label. I don't think it's fair to criticize an album based on what it influences, but who am I to say? This is a fun album. This is so good. Blinded by Fear, Slaughter of the Soul, Cold. Cold has an amazing guitar solo on it. Amazing guitar solo from Andy LaRoe, who I'm sure we'll talk about later in my collection, but Under a Serpent Sun, Into the Dead Sky, Suicide. I mean, every, every song on here is just so good. It's a really, really fun uh, workout album. If you work out, and if you see in my arms, you can tell that I do not hit the gym like ever, but if you do and you need a workout album, put this on. This shit rules. But if you're into death metal, you've heard this album, so like I don't need to recommend it. But if you haven't heard it and you're, you're avoiding it because of the stigma of core, check this out. This is so much better than all that core shit. Ending the A's, we have another death metal classic. Florida death metal classic. I'm sure you can guess what band it is, but... Autopsy. Severed Survival. 1989. This is a peaceful reissue. I mean, what can I say about this album? This is incredible. One of the best old school death metal bands. One of the best old school death metal albums ever. Center and label is... Sick. Uh, this album just so good. I mean, Chris Reifert, he's usually he's the main the main voice of Autopsy, literally the main voice. Can I please get this record back in? Thank you. But the real star of the show, gotta be what the fuck? Get in. There we go. Real star of the show on this album, Steve DiGiorno Pizza. His bass work is amazing. He's one of the best extreme metal bassists ever. His stuff with Satis, his stuff with Autopsy, his stuff with Death. If he plays on a record around this time, it's amazing. Charm Remains, Serving for a Vacant Coffin, Disembowel, Ring with Disease. I mean, every, again, every song is just incredible. You've all heard this album. You don't need me to sing its praises. I go back and forth as to whether I prefer this or Mental Funeral. I lean more towards Mental Funeral because I just think that's a little more unique of an album, but this is just so good. Straight ahead. Florida Death Metal. Doesn't get any better. Next up, moving on to the Bs. Sticking with old school Death Metal because that's just the best shit. Baphomet, The Dead Sean Harris. Most death metal fans will recognize this album cover. It's a very iconic album cover, but I feel like this is a really underrated old school death metal album. This shit rules. Um, New York, but it doesn't sound like you know suffocation or anything like that. It's more of like kind of New York bands that worship Florida. So it's got a very kind of just really solid old school death metal sound. Uh, that center label is just awesome. The real star of the show, just like on the last album, is the bass player. I hope I pronounce his name right. Gary Chapant. He takes this album to another, another level. He takes it from a standard old school death metal album to just a classic. I mean, The Suffering, Through Deviant Eyes, Made the Flesh, Valley of the Dead, Boiled in Blood, The Age of Plague, Streaks of Blood. I mean, every song is just, as with the theme with every, every album I showed up, every song is just so, so good. So, if you haven't checked out this album and you're into old school death metal, please check this out. If you're into old school death metal and you've heard this album before, give it another listen because it's... It's some really good stuff from just a, a time period where death metal was just so, so good. It doesn't get much better than stuff like this. Now we're going to move on to one of the most famous black metal bands. Now we're going to move on to one of the most famous metal bands ever. Top three or four. They're pretty much household names. Obviously I'm talking about Black Sabbath. 
Now, my Black Sabbath collection, along with some of the other bands in my collection, it's really, really strange the records I have. I have three other records, but they're strange picks. The only, I don't have any Ozzy studio album. I plan on getting the, the 10 year box set, the 10 year wool box set, if I can find that for a price that won't bankrupt me. So I only technically have one Ozzy studio, like vinyl, but it's not a studio album. It's actually a bootleg. This is the Days of Evil bootleg. Uh, concert live at the Civic Center, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is where I go to college. That's why they're selling it. Recorded December 8th, 1976. I mean, look at this track listing. Symptom of the Universe, Snowblind, All Moving Parts, War Pigs, Gypsy, Black Sabbath, Guitar Solo, Electric Funeral, and Ending with Children of the Grave. Doesn't get much better than that. I mean, this Ozzy... Sabbath stuff is not my favorite stuff from Sabbath, but some of the albums are just classic. There's no center label, but and it's not going to pick up on the camera, but it's actually blue uh, marbled. Let's see if I can. So, blue marbled, and you can't really see. It looks great when you hold it in light, but center labels don't even have labels on it, which is just what do you expect from blue legs, but. And the sound quality is what you expect from a bootleg, but uh, this rules. I mean, it's Aussie Sabbath. It's around. It's technically around the technical F technical ecstasy era, but yeah, this is this is so good. So I'm into bootlegs. I know a lot of people are for different reasons, but I like collecting them and. This is just one of two bootlegs I have in my collection. So, Black Sabbath, Days of Evil. Check this shit out. Next up, another Black Sabbath album. It's not even a Dio album. It's Born Again. I got into this album when I was in high school and I was really into Sabbath. And I was so much into like the Dio stuff. And I was a really big Deep Purple fan, so I heard that, oh man, Ian Gillen sings on a Sabbath album. This is going to be great. And I remember loving this album when I was in high school, but I have cooled off on this shit big time. This is, it's good, but it's just not the same. It's really not the same. Ian Gillen's vocals, I love them. I love them on Machine Head in rock, made in Japan. Even his solo stuff, he's a powerhouse, but... On here, he just sounds so weak. I don't know. Uh, this is an original press, 83. It's a classic Warner Brothers center label. I mean, it's not bad. It's not the worst album I've ever heard. Hell, it's not even, it's not even like the worst Sabbath album. This is, the worst Sabbath stuff, in my opinion, is like Technical SC and Never Say Die. But those are really the only bad Sabbath albums, in my opinion. This is okay. Back. They're trying to do that 80s kind of Sabbath sound, where it's like, it's not really the proto doom metal of the 70s. It's kind of more of a straight ahead 80s sounding record, but it sounds more like uh, that kind of sound mixed with your Deep Purple and your Gillen solo stuff. Like I said, it's okay. Trash is pretty good. Stonehenge, Disturbing the Priest, Zero the Hero, Digital Bitch is just ridiculous. Born Agains, whatever. Hotline, whatever. Like I said, if you're into Sabbath, you might as well give it a listen. You'll probably get something out of it, something positive, but Sabbath has better. Gillen has better. All around, all parties. This is not the strongest hour, but for what it is and the circumstances behind how much of a train wreck this was to record, it's okay. Last Sabbath album I have is actually the next one in their discography, Seven Star. This is the last Sabbath album I have, and this is honestly one of my favorites. This is awesome. Ian Gillen's out. They now have Glenn Hughes on vocals, and Glenn Hughes is amazing. His voice, unlike Gillen's, is still intact by this point. He should have been the vocalist of Deep Purple when he was in there. 
I don't know why they had David Coverdale be the vocalist. He sounds like he's singing with a mouthful of marshmallows, but whatever. Again, classic Warner Brothers Center label, original press from 86. Um, there we go. In for the kill. Seven star title track, Danger Zone, Heart Like a Wheel. Just, just really good stuff. If I have one complaint, it's the guitar tone is really weird. It's not kind of heavy. It's sounds kind of static you know, like distorted. Not really in a good way, but other than that, this album is so, so good. I really need to get the Tony Martin stuff on vinyl because that's my favorite Sabbath material. But, I mean, I need to get a lot of stuff on vinyl, as you can see. So far, I don't have a lot. But if you haven't checked this out because you're only into the Ozzy stuff and maybe kind of the Dio stuff, give this album a listen. It's so goddamn good. Next up, not metal, but he's one of my favorite artists of all time. I love so many of his albums. I only have two, but they're two of my favorites. One of the most popular musical artists ever. He's a he's the definition of a household name. Bob Dylan. This is his 1969 album, Nashville Skyline. Bob Dylan, folk singer, probably the most famous folk singer ever. This is a kind of a controversial album in the Dylan discography because this is his country album. First off, I love this album cover. I love the, the, the blue of the sky and how the, the sun is coming through. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous album cover in the back. Simple, but really, really cool. This is a country album, and it's it's not even 30 minutes long. It, it doesn't sound like, he's just sound, he just sounds like he's having fun. It doesn't sound like he's trying to write the next Blonde on Blonde or whatever. First song, Girl from North Country with Johnny Cash. That's so good. Lay, Lady, Lay, One More Night. Tonight I'll be staying here with you. This is a really fun album. If you just want to have a fun Dylan album that you don't have to take seriously, there's no politics, there's no 10 minute songs, there's, the lyrics aren't even really that abstract, they're just kind of love songs. Put this on. This is so good and so criminally underrated in the Dylan discography. It's so much fun. Uh, I have nothing really bad to say about Nashville Skyline. I think it's just an amazing, amazing album and an already amazing, amazing discography. So check this out. Second and last Dylan album I have is widely regarded as his best. It's not my favorite, but I can understand why it's the people's favorites. Blood on the Tracks. Take everything I said about Nashville Skyline, it being a fun album, it being short, this is the opposite. This is 50 minutes long, and it's some of the saddest, pretty much the saddest album in his discography by far. This is just some classic and depressing stuff. Pretty much the ultimate breakup album, if you ever get in a relationship. Um, Tangled Up in Blue, Simple Twist of Fate, Idiot Wind, You're Gonna Make Me Lose Some Room Somewhere to Go. If you see her, say hello, shelter from the rain. I mean, just an absolute musical folk dirge of an album, but utterly brilliant. One of my favorites. I go back and forth as to whether this is my, my third favorite Dylan album between uh, this or bringing it all back home. But regardless, this is an amazing album. My former college roommate, actually, this is his favorite Bob Dylan album. And if you're watching this, fuck you, Blonde on Blonde is best. This is still a pretty good album. Uh, if you want to get into Dylan, I'd, I'd honestly say start bringing it all back home because that showcases his folk stuff and his folk rock stuff. But essential. You can't call yourself a Dylan fan if you never heard this album. And the last album we have. This is pretty much the most famous black metal band ever, in my opinion. Norwegian second wave classic. I know second wave is entry level black metal. I, 
trust me, despite what my collection says, I do listen to more underground stuff. I just don't have it on vinyl. Burzum, the debut. This is my only Burzum album I have, so don't think that we're cutting this video off as I'm going to turn in the next video. We'll talk about like philosophy or whatever. I don't have it. This is a recent Back on Black reissue. It actually includes the Osp EP as well. Let me show off that artwork. Very simple back. This album is so goddamn good. Burzum from the debut until Philosophem is one of the best black metal bands ever. Everything after that is. I don't talk about it. But this isn't my favorite Burzum album, but this is the Burzum album I've listened to the most. There were times when. Like, this was like the only album I could ever listen to, period. So I don't know, label. Oops. Sick. This is the only album I could listen to for a period of time. As soon as I hear the vocals on... Jesus Christ, I love these sleeves. They're, they're so good, but... God damn, it's a pain to put them back in. No, it do No, it's sticking out on this side. What the fuck? Okay. Got... Fuck. Okay. Now we're good. Um, as I was saying, this album I've heard the sound so many times. As soon as the vocals kick in on Feeble Screams from Force Unknown, like I could pretty much like, I'm taken back to exactly where I was when I was listening to this album on repeat. Uh, unbelievable stuff. Feeble Screams from Force Unknown. The uh, Lord Depths, Spell of Destruction, channeling the power of souls into a new god, war, the crying orc. My Journey of the Stars, and of course Dungeons of, Dark Dungeons of Darkness. Uh, I can't read the two first two Osk songs because I, I don't speak Norwegian, so I don't know what they say. But the last song on there is The Lost Forgotten Sad Spirit, which is just amazing. <sighs> super, super good stuff. Like I said, this isn't my favorite version album, but it's the one that I've listened to the most by far. So good. Um... If you want to get into black metal, don't start with this. This Varg's vocals are... They will... You will not enjoy it. I know the first time I heard this, I was just getting into black metal and I hated it. Came back to it. Masterpiece. So that's the last album for this video. Hopefully I have the willpower and the motivation to make another one. And in that case, I'll see you then. We'll talk about like... 10 more records or so, so look out for that.